Open source Linux operating systems have become really good over the past couple of years. In fact, they have gotten so good that if you don't have any fancy equipment like an audio interface, then you don't even need the command line anymore. Linux graphical user interfaces, also called desktop environments, have become extremely polished in terms of usability, visuals, but also overall features. And with the vast amount of different choices and customization options, Linux is the perfect place to build your ultimate PC experience. But that being said, there are a couple of things that Linux can't do yet. And after my last video about 8 things that Linux does better than Windows, I think it's only fair if we take a look at it from the other side as well. Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video I'm going to show you 8 things that Windows still does better than Linux. But before we dive in, let me quickly remind you that you don't forget to give this video a like and if you're new to the channel then you should also consider subscribing for more Linux content just like this. Thanks! Alright, let's start off with standardization. Like mentioned earlier, on Linux we have choice. And each desktop environment very often has its own frameworks and design guidelines how an application is supposed to look. This of course is a nightmare for a coherent design and using several applications might become messy really fast. But hey, that's a picky thing to say, right? Well, no actually, because that's only half the story. A coherent design is not just useful for how an application is supposed to look, but also how it operates. Basically all of you know of the typical tabbed layout that Microsoft Office products use. Other Microsoft applications usually use a similar layout and third party developers usually copy it as well, since users already know how to handle it. And if they don't, then they just have to learn one pattern instead of several. Another advantage of a coherent design is muscle memory. While that might seem absurd at first, if you are someone who likes to work fast or show off in some way, then different button margins, for example, are not ideal. Windows only has one design that basically hasn't changed since Windows 8, and only slightly before then. Windows can therefore feel very comfortable, and trying out something else may feel awkward. The next thing that Windows does better is hardware support. While this isn't really related to Windows itself supporting more hardware than Linux, the fact is that every hardware developer especially offers a driver for their products on Windows. And nowadays even Windows Update automatically finds and installs them for you. Finding compatible hardware that works on Linux is a really mixed experience. Sometimes there is a driver, sometimes there is not. Sometimes devices do work, but not to their fullest extent. And sometimes you can't buy the most recent item, like a GPU for example, simply because the drivers aren't compatible yet. That's especially annoying for embedded devices or laptops, since maybe Linux doesn't support your Wi-Fi or Bluetooth adapter yet. Or maybe your camera doesn't work. It can really be frustrating and annoying to some, that's for sure. Let's move on to something that also revolves around new hardware. Gaming. Gaming is something that Linux really has struggled in the past, since no one really wanted to make the effort to port the games over. But over the past two years, gaming on Linux has really begun to strive. Especially the Proton compatibility layer, which was developed by Valve and the open source community, has made Linux into a viable gaming option. But that's only if you're mainly into single player games. Anti-cheat is still the biggest problem on Linux, since game developers or publishers are either unwilling or in rare cases even unable to support Linux. If you like Valorant, Rainbow Six or even more casual online games, chances are that it just doesn't support Linux due to anti-cheat. That being said, even more compatible games that theoretically would work on Linux can run into some hiccups here and there. Some gamers complain about that gaming on Linux feels a bit more stuttery than it does on Windows. While this is very often game dependent, it isn't something that can't really be ignored. Once Wayland is supported by most games and compatibility layers natively, maybe those issues will go away. However, at the moment, that's the current situation. 
Oh, and there aren't really any GPU settings that you can tweak. Software support is one of the strongest arguments against the Linux desktop. Many programs that are in fact the industry standard for design, office work and even power applications just are not available on Linux. Period. Yes, yes, I know, sometimes you can get an application to work through Wine, however, very often it doesn't work with the most recent version or you can't even download it in the first place, since the website automatically detects that you're running on an unsupported operating system. Customized hardware like the Stream Deck, audio interfaces, capture cards, mouse and keyboard configuration software, a lot of stuff that used to work on Windows just won't run on Linux. Yes, there often are third party solutions out there, but even they are not perfect and often very limited. And that really sucks. Where Windows is also better than Linux is the overall ease of use. That might sound a bit weird, but Windows is for the vast majority of people easier to use. While the Microsoft Bing searches seem very counterintuitive for many, for a lot of people, especially older folks, it really points them into the right direction. The thing about Windows is that basically anyone could use it without any prior effort if they do read the texts carefully. If that overprotectiveness is too much for you personally, then I get it. But we need to consider every single person everywhere. Speaking of, because Windows is so popular, if you have a problem, then even with all of the generic responses, you typically find something way quicker than on Linux. Linux has so many different distributions and path changes that even viruses do have a hard time to compromise your system. Finding the right solution for your specific distribution and version can be really, really hard. And it's in general a real nightmare. Especially for new users. When it comes to documentation, we now also should consider the new Windows Copilot that Microsoft is about to release. Windows is much faster when it comes to adapting or even creating new trends, which people get really excited about. There are a lot of things coming that might make seem Linux obsolete, since it doesn't seem to keep up. And especially regarding trends, that is the case in some way. Big companies rival against each other in such a way that Linux doesn't even try to compete with them. And frankly, why should it? It's mostly about marketing anyway. But if you're eager to try out those features, then you won't find them on Linux in the way that you would on Windows. And last but not least, let's talk about the installation experience. Because on Windows, for most people, there isn't any. That's right, most people just go ahead and buy a laptop, boot it up, log into their Microsoft account and that's it. Of course, the Windows installer itself is not really all that well received nowadays. But most people don't get to experience that anyway. If that's a good thing or a bad thing, then that's for you to decide. But at the moment, that's just how it is. And that concludes my list of 8 things that Windows still does better than Linux. Both operating systems have their use cases today. Windows for software and hardware compatibility and Linux for a unique and tailored experience that you definitely won't regret if you give it a chance. So if you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and you should also consider subscribing to the channel for more videos just like this. I really want to know about your opinion and experiences about Windows versus Linux. So definitely also make sure to leave a comment down below. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.